Douglas Murray, welcome to the State of a Nation. Great to be with you. Tell me, when you were growing up in England, going to school at Eton, with the three-piece suit, correct? And tails? Four-piece four yeah. suit. <laughs> because including the top hat uh, and a cane. Did, they just dropped the top they hat. They just dropped, but you had a top hat. Why well, I can't go into my wardrobe. And a cane? Was there a cane? Um, no, no, canes were dropped then. Uh, but yeah, morning dress. So morning dress. Morning dress. Did you have a hero of the Jewish people on your list of things to be when you grew up? <laughs> um, no, I don't really think I knew what I was going to be. Um, but, uh, you know, you make choices in life and uh, stand up for the things you want to stand up for and you end up where you are. Is that a description you would agree with now? Uh, that the, the war has catapulted you to that no, position of no. hero of the Jewish people? No, there are many heroes of Jewish people. I'm, I, all I do is write and speak. Do you understand why some people see you? For them as being the breakout star, if you will, of the war who is a hero in some respects. I just don't like the word hero. I don't think writers should use those sort of terms. All the professions, all of the things which actually require real heroism, firefighters, soldiers, you know, policemen, they don't have endless backslapping about their heroism. So I always find it too much when writers do. Even worse than actors do, by the way. Even when, even when it does require a certain amount of courage to speak out on an issue that many people are afraid to make their voices Well, heard. all you have to do is just not listen to uh, maniacs. <laughs> Which is good advice. The yeah. problem is many of the maniacs are dangerous. Sure. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast and have this conversation is that you straddle a very interesting line since the October 7 massacre. You're a journalist. It is your job to report. You've interviewed the prime minister as well. But at the same time as a journalist, you're choosing to cover stories that the rest of the media isn't covering, to focus on certain issues like the Palestinian authorities, pay for slay mm -hmm. scheme that other media are overlooking, to bring voices that others aren't looking at. And so many people see you as, in some ways, not only a reporter who's covering Israel, but in some ways, our voice, or one of our voices in the world. Does that sound accurate or fair to you? I mean, I, I, I only have my own voice, um, and all I can do is to tell the truth as I see it. I'm very, very pleased when that coincides with other people's you know, opinions. Uh, I'm, I'm slightly alarmed to tell the truth. Um, I'm very pleased when I hear the reception I have in Israel and from Jewish communities around the world. Um, but it also slightly saddens me, and that's because it sort of seems to me that people feel that they don't have very many allies. That's true. And if it is the case, it's extremely worrying as well as sad. And if it isn't the case, it's just sad that people feel so alone, or at least how few non-Jews speak up. Um, and uh, so it's both, you know, enormously humbling and rewarding, but also I think saddening to me because I, I mean, why wouldn't, I mean, why should Jews be surprised that somebody who's not Jewish sees their point of view? It shouldn't be that rare. It shouldn't be that rare. I mean, I mean by comparison, think of the number of people who hadn't heard of the Houthis until about 10 days ago and are already way bang on the side. They you know, love the Houthis. Couldn't really I couldn't find Yemen on a map and so on, but they really have taken that side. And people aren't that surprised by that, by comparison. But it seems to be surprising if somebody's on the side of Israel. And that's really astonishing because, you know, over the last year in Israel, we had a year of very difficult political polarization. Yeah, I heard felt about that. The whole country had gone mad. Mm. And then suddenly October 7 happened, and we saw people covering up, denying Hamas's atrocities, mm. now in many cases, including senior UN officials, mm. or in fact, the whole UN mechanism, intervening to try to save Hamas's skin in the wake of the mm. massacre, and it feels that the whole world has gone mad. Does it look that way to you? Well, I think the world's been mad for years. Maybe it always, <laughs> maybe it always was. Um, maybe it always was like that. I mean, I've, I said during the COVID era to various friends and colleagues, I said, there's one job in this era which don't go mad. And that sounds like quite a simple demand. Turns out to be much more difficult Why than so? I expected. Well, because people derange themselves. We, we live in an era where there's, uh, we, have, we all have a device in our pockets that gives us a bewildering amount of information, too much for the human brain, coming in too fast. The treadmill is going faster than our feet can go, and it deranges a lot of people that just fall off and fall into catastrophe. But I mean, it's not just a question of derangement and people getting distracted by whatever social media is sending them, but there seems to be some sort of episode happening 
Hmm. in the West right now, the mass protest that we are seeing against Israel in favor of the Houthis, even as they fire at British mm -hmm. targets and British ships, this total mobilization of parts of society against mm. Israel that lead many people in Israel and around the Jewish world to see it as profoundly anti-Semitic and Which not just is. a question of anti-Israel. Mm. And, and that's because what many people see is that anti-Semitism has historically been a tool through which failing societies or societies that seek to deflect from their own mm -hmm. failures then mobilize themselves around this total ideology mm. of opposition yeah. to the Jews. And that's how we find that even within the protests around the world, we have a clip here from one of the climate protests that Israel seems to play a role in all these other different causes. Well, yes, in which because, because, you know, for anyone that's taken a side of the Israeli Hamas Palestine war, it would be intellectually dishonest for them to say that the coverage has been 50 50. In other words, it's been even handed in the coverage of what Israeli is, is Israel has done or what Hamas and Palestinians have, do, have done. And the fact of the matter is, it is pretty one sided that most of the journalistic covers, the covering of this war, has been on the side of Hamas and Houthis and Iran and Hezbollah. And that is striking. But the fact, just like this um, moderator, uh, the interviewer is asking Douglas, is that it seems that every single solitary problem in the world is being put on the backs of Israel. Climate change, it's the fault of Israel. Monetary problems, fault of Israel. Bombing campaigns, fault of Israel. Proports disproportionality of attacks, it's Israel. Everything is Israel. They exist. Jewish people exist. It's a fault of Israel. People are coming to um, Israel. It's a fault of Israel. When Israel defends itself, they're at fault. Now, look, we can have an argument. We can have a discussion. We can have a debate as to the proportionality of the response of Israel against the Palestinians and Hamas. But you have to understand one thing. In the fog of war, as they say, there's going to be collateral damage. Now, yes, we feel for every single innocent life, babies, children, women, men that have died as part of this collateral damage. But every time they talk about this, it always goes back to 75 years ago, 80 years ago, 1,000 years ago. They took the land. They took the land. They took the land. Look, that may or may not be true. That is a discussion that's going to be there for the ages. But the fact of the matter is Israel is here. It's not going to go away. And then when these things occur, now who do you have on the side of Israel? And that's what the interview is saying, is that it seems that Douglas Murray is one of the few voices, one of the few loudest voices that is at least bringing light to some of the circumstances that are occurring inside here and just trying to be, see if he can even the playing field. Well, the same thing happens in the United States of America. The coverage is all one-sided, tilted to the leftist side. And you very get very rarely do we get to hear, at least on the TV media from the alphabet networks. You know, conservative talk radio is a whole different story. Yes, we own the airwaves there but not on the alphabet networks. And the same goes, in fact, okay, for Britain and France and other Western European nations. Anyways, folks, that's what we have on tap for you today. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, where we bring you interviews. And this time we're having, an, there's an interview being done by the State of Israel, Elon Levy with Douglas Murray. Let's get back to the interview right now. It does have something to do with it because I mean, several reasons. One is the thing you say about uh, the, the, the nature of anti-Semitism and societies that latch on to it. We all know that it's a very, very bad sign when a society lurches towards anti-Semitism for lots of reasons. One of them is for the society itself. It suggests that the society is dissolving and degrading into a feverish place. Um, Vasily Grossman, one of my favorite writers, writes in the middle of life and fate, his great epic of the 20th century, that, um, that on his three pages in the center of that 900 page masterpiece, he says, 
um, tell me what you accuse the Jews of, I'll tell you what you're guilty of. Um, absolutely true. Absolutely true. And well, how is that playing it? How's that playing out now? Do you see? Well, I mean, f for a lot of people, it's working as um, no. The people you mentioned, like the, why are the climate people? Well, let's have a look. We okay, actually have yeah, a little yeah. clip from uh, Greta Thunberg, who's uh, ah, become yes. one of the major Hamas fangirls recently. <laughs> No climate justice, no climate justice on, occupied, on land. occupied land. No climate justice on occupied land. I mean, what are they, what are they talking about? How has the question of Israel <laughs> come to claim such a massive... And that's exactly what's happening, folks. Greta Thunberg, this idiot, this woke social justice warrior. She's an awful, she's awful. She's an adult, white female leftist. Awful. And she comes on climate. They just basically take the climate change narrative and they bend it to whatever narrative they want. They have the narrative of climate change, that the world is ending, that we need to get rid of fossil fuels and we need to go into other forms of, you know, energy, natural forms of energy, wind, solar, water, hydroelectric, those kind of things. And they bend that narrative to that. And now, climate change? Oh, you've occupied land? You're a climate change denier. You're causing climate change because you're occupying lands. It is so moronic, so stupid, so idiotic, so retarded. But there's a lot of people that follow these idiotic morons these social justice warriors who polish their halos, these virtue signalers, and they follow them every single day. And they base their policy on them. It's amazing. It's a role in these people's psyche that it defines not only how they see the Middle East, but informs how they view every other struggle in the world. Well, one thing is uh, era yes. of profound stupidity. Um, in which, as I've said for many years, the adults have left the room. An example of the adults leaving the room is the idea that uh, a truant schoolgirl from Sweden should dictate global climate policy. Never seemed to me a good idea. Always seemed to me she should spend more time in school. And the fact that so many politicians bowed to her views on... I mean, I said when she first emerged, um, People didn't like to criticize her when she first emerged because they said, well, here's a schoolgirl who's autistic. I dare you to criticize her. I dare you. And I remember saying when she first emerged, like, what is this game? If I found a younger person who was more autistic and adored fossil fuels and I put that person out there, would I win? <laughs> OK, it, it was always a trap, the Greta Thunberg thing, always a trap. Now she's of age, she's, she's an adult. so. And it's easier to criticize her, or it should be. Um, Absolutely. It's always been a bad sign when things like that happen. And yet I feel that it goes deeper than well, it does, but saying but the world has always been no, mad, no, 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 the world has always been stupid. Something is happening no, no, no. now. But a very specific thing. There are times, if, if, if you read an account of some, if a time in the Middle Ages where a, a young girl with blazing eyes came from a neighboring village and told you all you were going to burn, you go, well, I mean, that's a strange sort of thing to happen. Well, here we are in the 21st century with exactly the same phenomenon. It's a very odd thing, this whole devolving of expertise um, and, 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 and what these people end up with. They, they're, the, the one, there's an analogy from Japanese culture, which is that if you're a warrior for a, um, a, a great leader in medieval Japan, um, and if your leader died, you would wander around the land looking for another person to affix your loyalty to. That's what these people are. They, 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 believe, uh, they believe the earth is burning, uh, uh, climate emergency, climate emergency, uh, Palestinian emergency, this emergency. They are desperately, desperately searching for things to attach their, 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 themselves to. And there's another point on this, which is that these people are doing um, politics by just every issue. You can always tell somebody hasn't thought deeply about anything when they have completely predictable views on every single issue. If you'd have asked me five years ago, how do you think Greta Thunberg will end up on the Palestinian question, I'd have said, she'll end up exactly like that. 
because she'll get her politics a la carte. But the fact that Israel has become this bugbear issue and part of the basket of what it means to be on the left, I understand. What I don't understand is the obs Well, appreciate you taking the time to watch, folks. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Sheikh Show. Hope you enjoyed that video clip of Douglas Murray being interviewed for the State of Israel, the nation. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Sheikh Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser, and if you haven't done so already, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel if you like our content. Like, share, and follow us. You all know what to do. Put your comments down below, and I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right, and when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.